Welcome to the Known Victory Church YouTube channel. We are so glad that you found us today. We exist to make Jesus known and to be a place that anyone can call home. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe, like, and share these messages so we can truly make Jesus known in our homes, cities, and across the world. We pray that this message impacts you and helps you to grow closer to Jesus. Thank you for being here. If you're new, I'm Dustin. I'm the lead pastor, and it's an honor that you're with us today. I stayed up last night. It wasn't that late to watch the Oilers game. Yeah. So that's about it. That's all I have to say about that. Uh, but that's right. Again, welcome you to church. Excited uh, that you're joining us today. And, you know, the past two weeks, I haven't spoke. We've had a guest speaker, and then we had Creation Ministries last week. So I haven't spoken two weeks, which is the longest break I've had from speaking in a very long time. So I had a little energy today, you know what I mean? So uh, I'm excited, um, you know, for uh, what it is. And normally as we start our year, so when we start 2024, how I like to start it is talking about prayer. Because I think, you know, when we can in January dedicate our year to prayer or growing closer to Jesus, it's really important. But this past year, we didn't do that. Um, because some other things were happening and we kind of went into some of the vision that God had placed uh, on my heart for our church. And so we never got to talk about prayer. And as I was preparing and thinking about summer, I thought this is an incredible space um, for us to talk about prayer. Why? Because for many of us, summer tends to be a little bit less busy in regards to work and school, but it can get extremely busy with activities and vacations and things to do because of the weather. And as we enter into summer, we're kind of in this space where we get busier, but we also get a little bit less busy depending on our schedules. And what's interesting about summer, and I've noticed this as a pattern in my own life, is that it can be easy for, for me to let my spiritual life slide or get a little weaker during the summer. Why? Because I want to go outside and I want to go jump in there's not many like rivers around here that you can jump in because I've never swam in the, this is North Saskatchewan River. I heard it's not a good time. Uh, I used to go swimming in the Bow River, but the thing about the Bow River is it's, it's um, very cold. Uh, it could be 40 degrees outside. You go in there, you're like, I might, th- this isn't healthy for me. You know what I mean? It's not good for my lungs. It's, it's cold. But, but when you get into summer, it can be easy, I think, for us to let our spiritual lives slide a little bit because there's other things that we want to do. Now, of course, part of our worship or part of us growing closer to Jesus is being a part of his creation and being outside. And, you know, Beth and I, when we used to live uh, in Cochrane uh, before we moved here, we used to go to the mountains for lunch. Because it was like a 30-minute drive. We'd go eat lunch in the mountains and come back. And part of us, you know, we'd even just, like for me, like the beauty of just being in creation. But I think when it comes to summer, again, it can be easy for us to let our spiritual lives slide. And I think that prayer is something that we always need to be doing even if we're busy. That even if the weather is nice, that even if we got all our camping trips planned, I think it's very important in the summer to stay connected to God and stay connected to his people. I think sometimes it's easy for us to just get away for the whole summer and go on our extravagant things. But I want to encourage you, when you're away, make sure you're spending time with Jesus. And make sure you're also staying connected to our family as well. Because we miss you when you're gone all summer, right? And and I think when we talk about prayer, what I want to talk about today is a new message called Five Ways Prayer Changes Me. I think when we often think about prayer, at least for me, a lot of my prayers are about changing my circumstance, right? God, I know there's a storm coming. Let's uh, move that to tomorrow, Right, the storm's coming. God, like, can we just divert it? I'm not, I'm not ready for the storm. Our, 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 our prayers are often, God, change my circumstance. Change what I'm going through. I need you to provide, which are great prayers. But I think part of what prayer does is it doesn't change our circumstance. What does it change? It changes me. What does it do? It, it, it creates strength inside of us or it creates this boldness or it creates faith inside of us that stirs up. So that way, rather than run away from the storms, we can actually run into the storms ready to actually go. Because as we know, as life comes, things can get crazy and we get busy. We have kids and life just comes at us. And oftentimes we don't actually schedule time in our 
schedule to pray and spend time with Jesus. It's about changing us, I think, more than it's about changing our circumstance. And there's, there's moments in scripture where you see p- people praying prayers like this. When Jesus was in the garden, right, he says, not my will, but your will be done. Saying, you know what, God, I need your strength. He said the angels came in and, and strengthened him. That yes, we can get stronger as we pray. So I have five ways, and there's so many more ways, but five ways that prayer changes us. And the first one is this, is that I learn to be still. Now, I, I have ADHD, if you didn't notice. And being still is one of the hardest things that I can do, to be honest. Like, like being still is very, very, very challenging for me. And this became very prominent at an early age when I started going to school. Where I'd always be, and very impulsive, right? Doing whatever I thought was right in the moment. Got me into trouble a lot. And being still is not always easy. Especially, I find, you know, we have two little kids running around. Being still in that chaos is very tough. To be still. See, stillness speaks to quiet and peace. But how many of us know our world is loud and chaotic? But yet, Scripture's filled with with Scriptures on be still. And I think this is an art we're not very good at is be still. You know, and even when we pray, oftentimes it's like before we eat a meal, our kids have already eaten half their food because we're trying to get everything sorted and we're starting to pray. It's like, Two, three second prayer, boom, and we finish eating. Like, like we're busy. And we feel if there's quiet, if we, we feel if there's moments where nothing's happening, then, then, it's not, then we're actually not going to be okay. There's always somewhere to be and something to do. There's always places to go. There's always appointments. There's always graduations. There's always work. There's, there's always the things that come up. And we need to learn to be still. See Psalm 46 verse 10, right? Be still and know that I am God. So in our stillness, we need to know who he is. And who is he? It says, he says, I will be honored by every nation and I will be honored throughout the world. The king of our world. See, this is what prayer does. What does prayer do? It builds a stillness inside of us that can't be battered by the storms or the waves. What does prayer do? It, it aligns our hearts with his and allows us to be still and know. What do we know? That we're gonna be okay. What do we know? That he will provide. What do we know? Sometimes we gotta stop working and we gotta sit back and give him back control of our life. To be still. This is what prayer does. Allows us to be quiet. Be calm and be peaceful and know who he is. And this comes through prayer, through personal and private prayer. See, when Jesus was teaching on prayer, then the environment that the stillness comes, this is what he said in Matthew 6, 6. But when you pray, go away by yourself and shut the door behind you and pray to your father in private. Then your father who sees everything Real, will reward you. I think if we want to build our spiritual life, if we want to build our prayer life, we have to learn how to be still. To create moments in our schedule where there is no distraction. Moments in our schedule where it's quiet. And I know how hard it can be. How hard it can be to find a quiet space because it feels like when you have young kids, right? You know, we're up early and then it's loud all day. And then sometimes our kids don't fall asleep. We're trying to put them to bed and they don't fall asleep. Last night it was 10 p.m. Our oldest daughter finally fell asleep. She'd been trying to get her to sleep for two hours. You know, the whole day was basically taken up. Where do you fit in this stillness and this quiet? It's not always easy, but it's not something that's gonna happen by accident. It's not like one day you're gonna wake up and be like, wow, here it is, you know? We gotta find it and we gotta create space for it in our schedules where we have quiet. We go into the private and we go into the the quiet and push out the noise and 
push past our schedules and we create space for intimate conversations with Jesus. A space that it's not necessarily even us speaking, but for him to speak to us. Which most often, how does God speak? Well, most often God speaks to us through scripture. And if you're looking for what God is saying, I would start with what he's already said. To go to scripture in your quiet time and read and see what God is speaking and what he has spoken over the course of history. We can sit in this quiet, and to be honest, it might only be five minutes. But five minutes is a lot better than zero minutes. Five minutes, maybe it can be an hour. Maybe it could be five hours. But we've got to learn the art of being still. In the quiet, I think that's when we're going to hear him speak loudly to us. We can't let busyness control our lives, but rest in stillness to reign. See, I think stillness is an art that few of us have mastered. But prayer is the first step towards learning how to be still and know. The first step towards being filled with a life of stillness and rest, a daily space to be still and listen. And the number two is this, is that I become thankful. You know, when, when we're praying, what do we do? It, 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 it helps us learn to be still, but it also helps us become thankful. You know, so many times throughout Scripture, read through it, especially the New Testament. Moment after moment and verse after verse and teacher after teacher, Paul or Jesus, whoever's writing, telling us how, how interconnected prayer and thankfulness are. And we've shared so many of these Scriptures over us. I'll share two of them Today, Colossians 4, verse 2, what does it say? It says, devote, uh, devote yourselves to prayer with an alert mind and what? A thankful heart. So when we go to prayer, we have to go with an alert mind, but not just an alert mind, with a thankful heart. See, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18, says this, always be joyful. Never stop praying and be thankful in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you, who belong to Christ Jesus. Always be joyful. How many of y'all know that's tough? To never stop praying and to be thankful in all circumstances. That is not always easy. But I think the more we pray, the more grateful we become. Because our eyes are on our provider, not on our lack. Our eyes shift from what we don't have to who we do have. And who do we have? Jesus, the creator of everything. God came and created, and that's what we have. The more close we are to Jesus, the closer we are to Jesus, the more thankful we will be. And how do we get closer to Jesus? Through prayer, through worship, and through scripture. I think sometimes we feel like, God, why are you so distant? And we look back and he never moved. We're the ones who just run in a mile a minute. We're like hummingbirds. Our wings just keep on flapping from one thing to the next. We never can sit and rest like eagles do in the sky. We need to be thankful in everything. When, we, when we're close to Jesus, we become more thankful and we realize all the blessings we have. And all the things that we have right now that we were praying for last year or last week or 10 years ago, the things we were praying for that now we have, we prayed for them, the blessing came. We're still like, God, there's more. It's like the Israelites running around in the wilderness being like, God, this is not enough. Give us more. And he just kept providing and providing and providing. See, we can see the abundance when everyone else sees the lack when we're closer to Jesus. You know, for us, this is a recent story for us. You know, our transmission is going on our van. And, you know, we, we had just literally got this van last summer, and it has a problem shifting to sixth or seventh gear. So that when we first realized this, we're driving. And I'm like, Beth, like, you need to stop uh, going so fast. Because I'm telling you, it's revving. It's like 6,000 R- R- RPM. That's the word, right? Yeah. So it's just, it's just, and it's revving. And then one day I'm driving home, and it starts smoking, my, our van. And I'm like, Beth, this is not good. Like, I know, I know very little about vehicles, but what I do know is they're not supposed to smoke like this. 
So we, we, get it, we get it to the shop, and they're like, yeah, this isn't the transmission problem. This is a different problem. The transition problem still exists, but this is a coolant line to your engine is uh, busted. It's not working. That's why it was smoking. Good thing you didn't drive. I'm like, Phew. you know? This is what, you know, this has been having for the past couple of weeks. And, I, 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 and, you know, it used to be for me, I'd be like, God, like, what are you up to? You know, like, why is this going on? It's expensive. Transitions aren't cheap. If you've never had to replace a transmission, just Google it. <laughs> it's, not, it's, not, it's not a good feeling when you're driving home from work and your van smoking. You're like, hmm, will I make it home today? You know, like, I don't know. You know, and, I, and my prayers used to be, God, what am I not seeing here? God, I want you tonight while I'm sleeping, I want you to do a full transmission swap while I'm sleeping tonight, you know? It's my prayers, you know? But yet, to be honest, all I'm feeling about this whole thing is gratitude. And it's like, it, it doesn't even make sense to me. I'm like, I should be angry, you know? Like, like, I should be so upset. I should be so frustrated like I used to be. But you know what I'm, I feel is like we have one vehicle and you know what? We can still drive it just not really over 70 kilometers an hour. So when we're on the highway, we're the ones going slow in the fast lane, you know? Like, I'm just joking. <laughs> Imagine me, you catch me just driving to the van in the fast lane on the end day. Who's this guy, you know? You find out it's me. You're like, uh-oh. <laughs> but I'm just feeling so blessed. We have another vehicle, another vehicle that can go over 70 kilometers an hour. Yeah, unbelievable. And you know what's awesome is getting here from my house, you only have to go 60. So I'm feeling so blessed. And, and, every, and like, every, you know, I have people like my family, like, hey, what are you going to do? I'm like, I don't know keep going like you know like keep driving it. it might explode I don't know how transmissions work I'm gonna keep on going all I feel is grateful and I think why is because I've seen what God has already given me and I think thank you yeah we have to all cram into our little Corolla and go oh well at least we can go at least we can roll down the window so it can cool down a little bit and I, all I feel is gratitude and I think it's because God has changed my heart. And the more I draw close to him, he, he says, yeah, I'm, in, I'm more than enough for you. And I've become so much more grateful. So I would encourage you when it comes to prayer is one thing you'll start to see in your life is gratitude becomes so much more prevalent. That the things that you used to frustrate you become the miracle that you wanted. And, you know, and then the next uh, the next way that, that prayer changes me is I become stronger. We all want to be strong, right? We all want to carry the weight of our family. We all want to be, give our kids and give our families good lives. We want to be a provider. We want to be able to overcome the obstacles that come. We want to be able to keep on fighting that even when things are hard, we can, we are gonna, we're never going to give up. We all want to be strong. And I don't know about you, but I don't know how many times I've looked at myself and realized how weak I actually am. That to be honest, I don't have the strength to carry it all by myself. But what happens is when we don't pray, what happens is we just keep piling it on. It's like, yeah, our transmission went, but then there's going to be a new problem. It's just going to keep adding on and adding on and adding on. And I'm walking, trying to carry this weight. And Jesus is sitting there being like, yo, like, Bring it to me. I'll, I'll help you. How do we become stronger when we pray and we draw close to him? I realize how weak I am when, I, when we give in to temptation. We do the things we shouldn't and we pursue the things we shouldn't. But how do we get stronger through prayer? We can see this in Matthew. It says this, keep watch and pray so that you will not give in to temptation. For the spirit is willing but the body is weak or the flesh is weak. See, the context of this comes when Jesus is praying in the garden before he's about to be arrested. And he's, he's asking one of his disciples, his closest disciples, to come and pray with him. And while he's praying, he turns back and there are his disciples sleeping. They're sleeping. Imagine that moment, right? Where he, and you know Jesus, he's in turmoil in the garden. It's not like it was just like, you know, easy peasy. It was hard. Some of the, the most powerful prayers you see are when Jesus is praying in the garden. 
of anguish and knowing what's about to come and his best friends are sleeping. And he says, keep watch and pray so that you will not give into temptation for the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. See, this is what happens when you even go to the gym and you exercise. What happens is you get stronger. What happens is you can get up the stairs without being out of breath. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Sometimes I get out of breath getting potato chips from my, my, my uh, cupboard, getting back to my couch. And I'm like, I shouldn't eat these. I'm like, oh, well, you know, I'll, I'll burn it off tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, right. That's what happens when you go to the gym. You exercise and you get stronger and you get faster and you get better endurance. And it's the same with prayer. We're building spiritual strength and our spiritual endurance See, the more time we spend in prayer, the stronger our spirit is. The stronger we are that we can stay up and pray. He says, can you not just pray, stay up one hour and pray? See, it's hard at first. It's hard going to the gym at first. It's hard getting up before your kids so you can have spiritual time in the morning. It's hard. But the more you do it, the stronger you'll become and the easier it will become. It's hard at first. See, when we started our Wednesday morning prayer last fall, it was super tough the first few weeks. I remember being like, I don't think this is going to work. That's like, I have to wake up like five on Wednesday, right? Like, why why is this going to work? And I remember, I was thinking of excuses. I'm like, okay. Am I feeling sick right now? You know, check the temperature. Like, maybe that's my excuse, you know. Maybe I can sleep. And I got to sleep. I didn't sleep. I didn't sleep well last night. I got to get my rest. But I'm telling you, the more we've done this, we've been almost doing this a year now, the easier it is. And not just easier because it's like I like to get up because I don't. But what I like to do is when I get here and we can pray together as a family. And it's hard at first. And I'm so grateful that we stuck with it. And I stuck with it. And for me, it's, it's, it's a sacrifice. Give up an hour of sleep for an hour of prayer. The same thing Jesus said. Can you not just get up for one, one hour? And it's one of my favorite things that we do as a church right now is our Wednesday morning prayer. An hour or so of prayer to start our day Wednesday mornings. I love it. And I would encourage you, like I always do, encourage you to come. Or if you have prayer requests, let us know. We'd love to pray for them Wednesday morning. Or if you need prayer for something, come Wednesday. It's an awesome, awesome opportunity to grow spiritually and spend time in prayer. You know, the next one here today is is this, is I grow in forgiveness. See, we're all called to forgive. The Bible is full of moments where we're to forgive those who have hurt us. In fact, it's filled with scriptures that show the mandatory reality of forgiving others. How vital it is for our own spiritual health, our ability to forgive. This is what it says in Mark chapter 11, verse 25. It says, but when you are praying, first forgive anyone you are holding a grudge against so that your Father in heaven will forgive your sins too. But when you are praying, first forgive anyone you are holding a grudge against. See, before we even start our prayer or we start our prayer life or our journey, forgiveness needs to be on our lips and on our heart. And when we are closer with Jesus, what happens is we experience his grace and we experience his forgiveness and we experience it firsthand. And our responsibility or our role is to actually share that forgiveness with those who have hurt us too. Now, that's also not easy. But this is what prayer does. It makes forgiving people easier. Why? Because the more we pray, the more we're like Jesus. And Jesus is the one who was on the cross and said, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. That's the type of forgiveness that I want to have in my life. And how do I get that? Spending more time in prayer and, and conversation with God. That's how I get to a place in my life where I can actually forgive quickly is when I actually am spending more time with Jesus. See, one of the best ways to know where you are, where you're at with your forgiveness journey, is if you can pray for your enemies and pray blessings over your enemies. 
the people who have hurt you the most. That's how I've gauged it in my own life. I'm like, where am I at with forgiveness? And I think about that one thing. I'm like, no way. Not yet, right? I'm not ready. And God's like, you better figure it out. You know, he doesn't, I don't know. You know what I'm saying though. See, as we draw close to Jesus, what happens, we're changed. The old becomes old and the new becomes new and it excites us. When we start to see the newness inside of us, how we respond to things that used to get us angry or used to get us upset or used to cause us to run away, now we can face them head on. And we're like, God, like, why am I so easy to forgive this? Two years ago, there's no way. It's because the more we draw close to Jesus, the more we become new, the more we become like him and gain his heart for our situation in our lives. We want to be people that forgive because we know the beauty of the forgiveness that we've already received. The last one here is this, is I grow in patience. And we know we live in a very impatient world, right? We want things immediately. We want things right now. We don't want to wait. This is our culture. You ever get an email from someone and then five minutes later you get a phone call asking if you got the email? Ever have that happen? They're like, "Uh, yeah. Give me like, give me at least 10 minutes. I haven't even read it yet. I'm just opening it, right? And we, they want the response immediately. But that's not how it always works, right? Even with technology. When things don't work like they're supposed to, it's so frustrating. Like when you have a TV remote that the batteries are dead. And you're like, I need to get a new TV. Or you lose the remote. We have an Apple TV and two kids. I don't know where it is. But they have this new thing you can like, I don't know, Beth does it. I don't really know how it works, but she can like find it with her phone, the remote. Remarkable. Or the TV, the volume button's busted and it doesn't work properly. You're like, Ugh. And then you have people be like, when I was a kid, I used to get up and turn the dial and there was only three channels. <laughs> that wasn't me yet, you know. Not quite. But what I had was TV where it's like, you want to watch a show, you better get up early on Saturday to watch your cartoons because there's no other way to watch it. But we are so impatient. I've said this before, but when you go through the drive-thru and they're like, hey, uh, your food's not ready. Can you go park in stall number two and wait? I'm like, I don't want to wait. I would have gone to a restaurant where someone would be my waiter then, you know? I'm just being honest, right? Like, I'm just saying how you're feeling, right? Like, this is, you're like, I'm in a rush. It's like, then don't stop at Tim Hortons before you go to work, you know? But it's patience is a lost in our, in our society, in our culture, being patient. But see, in the kingdom, patience is key because we don't always get what we want in our own timing. Sometimes we feel like we're knocking and there's no answer. We're like, I quit. I'm not knocking anymore. My knuckles are getting tired. We've lost patience in our society. But Matthew 21, 21 says this, then Jesus told them, I tell you the truth. If you have faith and don't doubt, you can do things like this and much more. This is after a, you know, incredible moment Jesus had. You can even say to this mountain, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea and it will happen. You know what prayer does? It builds our faith. It builds our faith. You know, sometimes before the mountain moves, we got to see the pebble move. Before we see the mountain move, we got to see the waters move a little bit to build faith inside of us. If I see our faith builds a space where we, where when we pray without ceasing, faith rises up inside of us. To keep on praying, keep on seeking, and keep on knocking, and keep on fighting. We might not see it in our own timing. We're like, God, I needed this yesterday. He's like, but what about today? What do you need today? See, as prayer grows, as we pray more, it pushes our own pride and our own desires down. 
and builds up his will within us. Jesus, right in the garden, your will be done. When Jesus is saying, teaching us to pray, what does he say? Your will be done, your kingdom come. See, Jesus taught us to pray and then he showed us how to pray it and how to live it out. Your will, not mine. Not my own timing, but his. See, these are just five of the ways. There's so many ways that prayer changes us. And I think sometimes, again, we get caught up in prayer changing our environment, but it actually changes us on the inside. That the things that we went through that used to rip us apart and now we can face them and we're like, God, where'd the strength come from? When did I get such good spiritual biceps? When did this happen? Or you see your friends being like, how are you okay? I know your story. I know what you're going through. How are you okay? And to be honest, sometimes we're like, I don't know. But all I know is that God is good. And he's faithful. He's so good. See, I think if we're struggling with unforgiveness or we're struggling with a lack of gratitude or struggling, we're feeling weak. If we're struggling with patience. We're struggling to hear what God is speaking. It's time to pray. I encourage you this summer, spend some time in prayer. Spend some time with him. Get away to the quiet. It might mean as couples, where you need to create a space in your own schedule where you say, hey, every day or every week, whatever, here's a couple of hours. You go, go wherever you want, or I'm gonna take the kids somewhere. House is yours, spend time praying, spend time with Jesus. I think one of the best ways we can serve our spouses is by giving them time to talk to Jesus. And how do we model that to our kids? The importance of, hey, this is mama's time, right? She's spending time with Jesus right now. Y'all better be quiet. I think it's one of the best ways we can serve our kids. It's not by working harder. It's not by making more money. It's by being an example of what it means to follow Jesus. You know, takeaway today is this, is that prayer doesn't just change my circumstance. It changes me changes me we can become stronger we can become more thankful we can be filled with gratitude in the midst of all of it so this summer let's pray let's spend time with Jesus this summer don't just forget you know and even if you get to the end of the day this is what happens right you get to the end of the day like oh I didn't read my bible I didn't pray today and you're like maybe tomorrow it's like what about right now five minutes 10 minutes I spent more time on Facebook today than 10 minutes and it's 11 I can spend 10 minutes or 20 minutes talking to Jesus maybe you're in your car and rather than listening to the radio and the the, the artists that are super popular right now I don't know what their names are because what I think is popular is not popular anymore and people tell me that, and I'm like, you're right. The songs I used to listen to in 2000 are 24 years old now. That's unbelievable. The relics now, these songs. And these artists, too. I'm just joking. But maybe when you're in your car, rather than listening to that, why don't you put on some worship music and worship in your car? You know, we have a, a Google, a, like Google Home at home, right? And sometimes we'll listen to some like fun songs, you know, but then other times we'll just put on some worship music and, and it's unique because Jane loves them more. She's running around the house, jumping around. I'm like, Phew. I need to go to the gym, you know, not just spiritually, you know, the physical gym. Spend time and growing spiritually as a family this summer. When we're when going away, spend time talking about Jesus and reading the scriptures and So let me pray. Pray for us that we can be people who are known by how we pray, that we can show our kids how to pray. So God, I thank you, first of all, 
We come to you as we do with a heart of gratitude for all the blessings we have in our lives. Places to sleep and food to eat, vehicles to get around, even in this room, chairs to sit in. And God, we, we, we're grateful today. God, I pray that in each and every one of us, you help us learn to be more grateful. That as we pray, God, I pray that gratefulness and thankfulness will grow within us. God, I thank you that you're teaching us to be patient, God, that we will trust you and trust your timing and trust, trust what you're doing. That our prayer is your will be done, not mine. God, those of us struggling with unforgiveness, God, I pray that as we receive your forgiveness, you allow us and you give us the strength to pour it out. The hardest things that have been done to us, the worst things, God, I thank you that you teach us how to forgive. God, when we're feeling weak, God, I thank you that you will make us strong. That we'll learn how to give you our burden. We'll learn how to give you our pain. We'll learn how to give you our past. We'll give it to you. And learn how to be, to walk in the strength that you promise us. God, I thank you that you are making us strong. You are making us thankful. You're teaching us how to forgive. You're teaching us how to be patient. And God, I pray that this summer you give us moments. Just rest. To be still and know that you are God. In Jesus' name, amen.